Quick start. Okay. Hello there. My name's Stephen Drake. Stephen Drake, Sean Holloway Chuck. Yes. He's actually uh, profile sound. Here we are. Welcome to our our uh, little presentation on the creamer here. Um, you'll see it's got a lot of knobs and switches on the front, but uh, for the most part, it's very simple to use. We plug a mic in the back. We turn the knob here until it's loud enough, and we hit record. That's generally your first approach with the creamer. Uh, we have a little bit of EQ here. Uh, we can add some low end with the fat controls, and we can add a little bit of top end with the air controls. And here we have an impedance switch, which a lot of people are concerned about their microphone impedance, and the simple solution is switch it around, and when it sounds good, hit record. Hit record. Uh, what I found, I actually did use the uh, switch. I had an older Shure mic, which was a high impedance mic, and we put it on a cable that was about 80 feet long, plugged it in to a piano, and on the high impedance setting, it sounded great. And it made a noticeable difference. Now, some other mics, you're gonna switch that around, you won't hear anything. So you would just leave it on low. Uh, what other knobs do we have? We have a tube mode. Now, this is one of the more important features right here. Yep. We use this one a lot uh, because if you don't know anything about tubes, you're probably like most people. Uh, you've heard they make distortion, saturate, do this, do that. Harmonic. Uh, you know what? That's all beside the point. When a prop tube works properly, it just sounds good. It sounds clean, it looks good on a scope, and it's not inherently distorted. But we do have different ways we can configure a tube. Your general tube works by there's a source of electrons in the center of the tube. Electrons flow outward to a collector plate. And the number of elements, and there's a screen in between. So your triode has three elements. Your cathode or emitter, your screen, and your collector plate. Now this was the original tube design from about 1903. And these things still sound good because they're very simple. Later on, people wanted louder radios, so they came up with what's called a pento design, which has five elements, and it's louder and, uh, if I would say anything, more American sounding, uh, in that it kind of reminds you of the difference between a Fender amp and a Vox amp. Um, it, it has a sort of a uh, fatter tone in the bass, and this is useful. Now, when you push that switch, it might pop or something, so turn your monitors down because the output's going to be louder from the pentode with the five elements. Now here we have a gain up. We can crank it if we want, if things aren't loud enough. Here another important switch, we have our transformer switch. And if I recall, um, I don't recall which one's in or out. Transformer is in. Transformer's in. Yep. And, and uh, once again, this is a subtle thing if you're not involved in electronics, but uh, a transformer has a tendency to smooth out the signal. Um, I found that uh, when I wanted super clear, clean low end, that the uh, solid state was great with a drum machine. And then when we had an old SVT cranked on a bass amp, that the, and for a vocal say, the transformer in sounded fantastic. Uh, what else do we have? We have a phase switch, which will reverse the polarity. Sometimes you use that. We have a couple of attenuation buttons here, and uh, here's our high-pass filter that rolls low end out, stuff you don't even hear in the speakers half the time. So, you know, I use that one very often. So, here I am blabbing away. Sean, any comments on what I just said? You covered it all, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, you know, we got a, uh, if your signal's really loud, you can hit this, uh, uh, or t really quiet, you can hit the plus 6 dB, and that'll send it. I think, uh, does that send it, boost it before the tube, am I correct? Yeah, that sends a higher input to the tube, and the pad um, lowers the input to the tube, and we have our phantom uh, phantom, uh, phantom power power. here, and uh, that's most of the buttons on this thing. Generally speaking, though, um, oh yeah, we have a line input. Uh, this is on the Creamer Plus, I think, or has the line output, but this one... So you can plug your guitar or bass straight in here, and you just hit that button and, and hit record after that guitar or bass and um, we run the we patch the creamer across our mix bus yeah we do that we 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 uh, we take the entire mix and we run it through the creamer and it just adds a little bit of juice uh, 
a couple things happen when you do that is um, it tends to uh, what happens in a circuit like this is we have a fairly high voltage moving around inside the creamer so one of the main things is is that do not put your coffee on top of the creamer ever just don't <laughs> anybody puts a drink on the creamer <coughs> slap their wrists, boot them out of the control room, make them go clean the bathroom up for, for punishment because this thing has about 300 volts DC running through it and if you light that up, uh, it could be very, very exciting and not in a good way. Uh, for that reason too, you read in various manuals to keep out of the back because there's juice in there. Well, let me tell you, you stick your hands in this thing and we may not hear your music after that. It's really hot in there, and I mean a lot of volts. So stay out of there, uh, um, and uh, you know, oddly enough, it, it does well with just a little bit of ventilation. I'm putting my hand on it now, despite uh, high voltage going through these. I think there are some kind of super ass Russian military tubes in there, and and they they run uh, nice and cool. So uh, just in a normal rack is usually just fine with the creamer. And I'll uh, see anything else. Um, Not really. Um, it, it it looks it, there's more buttons on it, but you know the it's very simple to use for startup. Really, the only thing I really do is to color. Ch look at the color that I'm listening to. The color with the pentode and the triode, and everything else is secondary. Really. Yeah, that that that's important. And you know me, plug a Fender Precision Bass in here. Hit that pentode setting and. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Really good. All right. Thanks, Lauren. I got one more tip to add. I had a little thing to add on just there at the end there. One more. <coughs> um, I, uh, when you have the Creamer Plus, which has a line in and out, there's a, one great trick which has gotten me fantastic results is what I call double cream. Ah. Uh. What's that? Oh, or, Double cream. No, 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 yeah, no yeah, the yeah. double creamer, uh, right? What have what I do for what I call the double cream is I plug a microphone into one side of the creamer, I take the line out into the other side of the creamer, and I double cream it. Uh, usually I'll, I might mix or match with pentode and triode settings, but a lot of times for a pop recording, a little extra saturation like that is really great for the lead vocal, it helps it stand out. I've also double creamed it, putting a limiter in between before I go to my recorder. Mm -hmm. This is a great trick to do with the Creamer Plus. It sounds fantastic. Like, yes. Really. I've double great. creamed out of the Jedi into the Creamer. After That's triple cream. Well, no, but I, I haven't used this, the second side. Oh, yeah. I've come out of the Jedi, and then I've come into a channel in the Creamer, and I've uh, double creamed the bass. Well, the circuit's time. very similar here as to here. It's just a, a yeah. different application and more, more oriented towards low But frequency. no, not triple cream. Double cream. Yeah. Okay.